as anyone can be. Don? Tom Foreman, thank you very much. I want to bring in now Kurt Bardella, who's a former spokesman for Breitbart, and even and Evan, excuse me, uh, McMullen, the independent presidential candidate. Sorry about that, Evan. Uh, but, right. <laughs> but before we get to them, I want to start with Joel Pollack. Uh, Joel is a senior editor at large and in-house counsel for Breitbart News. Uh, thank you, Joel. Thank you to the entire panel. But Joel, I'm going to start with you. Who is a real Steve Bannon? Is he an anti-Semite, a white nationalist, uh, a misogynist, as many believe? Well, the first thing to acknowledge is that Steve Bannon is a national hero. Because of Steve Bannon and Kellyanne, they saved Donald Trump's campaign, and they helped him win the White House. And as a result of that, we're going to see Supreme Court appointments of individuals who will uphold the Constitution. And for that, America owes Steve Bannon a great debt of gratitude. But no, he's not an anti-Semite. He is a person who treats all people equally. You can see I'm an Orthodox Jew, I'm very observant. Uh, I keep the Sabbath, I keep all the Jewish holidays, I keep kosher. Steve and I have worked together in close quarters for four and a half years, and he's always been very sensitive to Jewish concerns. He's probably the most pro-Israel advisor ever appointed to the White House. And I have to fact check Tom Foreman there. You know, if you're going to report something, you have to get the facts right. Breitbart News has nothing to do with birtherism, absolutely nothing. And I can tell you that firsthand because I'm the person who reported on some of that phenomenon. And you have to we'll, make sure that you tell your we'll viewers discuss, the truth about that. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that with Kurt as well, who is a spokesman, in just a moment here. But you said he's not an anti-Semite. Is he a white nationalist? My question, a white nationalist, a misogynist, or even bigoted in any way that you know of? Not at all. Steve Bannon does not have a bone of prejudice in his body. And in fact, Steve Bannon went out of his way at Breitbart to look for talent among non-traditional conservatives, just like Andrew Breitbart had championed the cause of black conservatives, Latino conservatives, women conservatives. Steve Bannon did the same thing, and he brought people on board. You know, I see Kurt there on television. He's an Asian-American conservative. Here we are, an Asian-American conservative, an Orthodox Jewish conservative, both of whom worked for Steve Bannon. And the question is whether he's a white nationalist. I think not. Well, then why traffic in that if he's not? Is that, is that even more insidious if he's not, but then he traffics in it? Can you name for me, Don, one white nationalist article at Breitbart? Just one. Well, I saw he, that whole build-up segment. I didn't see a single white nationalist article. Not one. There's, yeah, there's an article the offending the alt-right, and also the alt-right praises Breitbart, and, and even he has said he is a platform for the alt-right. So, um, you know, I, why traffic in that if, if, if he doesn't support it? It's important to draw a distinction between covering something and defending something. We published an article several months ago explaining the alt-right, talking about which parts of it were more offensive, which parts of it were less so. And that's not defending the alt-right. That's explaining it. In fact, the title, I believe, was something like explaining the alt-right to mainstream conservatives. That's journalism. That's not defense or advocacy. So I think it's very important to understand the distinction between those two. And that's a distinction we made very clearly at Breitbart yeah. and still make today. I, I said traffic, and I didn't say defend it. But anyway, so you, I, I want to bring in the other part, the other members of the panel now so that they can get in on this. Kurt, you worked with Breitbart. You know Steve Bannon. Um, you know, this is a man who said the website is a platform for the alt-right. We've seen the headlines. Can you separate the man from the website? A similar question that, uh, that I asked Joel before. Can you separate the man? Does he hold these views? Well, whether he holds these views or not, I don't think there is a separation between Steve Bannon and Breitbart. I think at this point, they're one and the same. And I've said this before, they're now going to go from being the propaganda arm of the Donald Trump campaign to now being the propaganda arm of the federal government. You know, for the first time, you're going to have a White House co-chief of staff, essentially, being able to run a media enterprise right out of the West Wing. And I think that's incredibly concerning and troubling given the type of content that Breitbart tends to publish and given the audience uh, that they're playing to. And, 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 and if we take Joel with his experience and say, okay, Joel, maybe he's not any of those things. Well, the audience that you're catering to certainly are those things. And so you're deliberately playing to that, playing to the worst divisiveness, the most prejudices, the, the, the worst racial divides to either try to get traffic or motivate people to support you. Uh, and I think that's despicable. Is it simply being too cute by half by saying, you know, well, pointing out, well, you're an Asian American, he's a Jewish American, or whatever, but is that? Just because you treat one person that happens to be uh, you know, associated with a particular uh, gender, race, or, or religion doesn't mean that, that that's how you treat everybody. Yeah. Evan, I want to ask you, the New York Times has a, a new interview with Bannon tonight, and they say he rejected what he called ethno-nationalist tendencies of some in the movement, his interest in populism and American nationalism, he said, has to do with curbing what he sees as the corrosive effects of globalization. And he believes his enemies are misstating his views and those of many Trump followers. These people are patriots, he said. They love their country. 
They just want their country taken care of. He added, it's not that some people on the margins, as in any movement, aren't the bad guys, racist, anti-Semites, but that's irrelevant. What's your reaction, Evan? Look, just as you said, Don, Bannon is somebody who's called Breitbart a platform for the alt-right movement. He cannot divorce himself from that statement. If that weren't the case, then, then I think that, that we'd be having a different discussion. But you know, he can say what he wants now, but the fact is that the KKK and the American Nazi Party are all celebrating his appointment. He said very truthfully that Breitbart was a platform for the alt-right movement. The alt-right movement is certainly a white supremacist, white nationalist movement that mm -hmm. does involve racism. It just is what it is. And if you're Donald Trump, if you're the president-elect, it's, you know, it, it should be high on your list of priorities to unite the country, especially after such a divisive campaign. And we don't we just don't see that with Bannon picked as, as chief strategist. That's so, that said, Joel, here's what my colleague uh, Anna Navarro tweeted today. She said, folks, it's real simple. Good, decent, inclusive Americans who believe in equality do not get praised by the American Nazi Party and the KKK. So the question is, why does the president elect Trump want Bannon in the White House? Joel? Well, let's put it this way. You have the new Black Panther Party praising Barack Obama. You have Obama sitting in Jeremiah Wright's church for 20 years, and he dissociated himself from none Jeremiah Wright. None of those, no, so none of those think, people were so, advisors wait a second, to... You have to but you hold have on, to, hold on. No, he was... If you're, a, if, yeah, you're asking you're right. me, if you're asking me mm -hmm. to be honest and fact check, none of those people were advisors to the president. He did not appoint any of those people when you're he You're not applying office. the same standard to both people. Barack Obama was the president and came from this environment. Steve Bannon does not come from those environments. And Anna Navarro and Evan McMullen have both lied openly about Steve Bannon. They have both said he's an anti-Semite. Evan is on your show tonight. He can't defend that statement. Kurt Bardella sure didn't, even try, didn't even try to say whether Steve Bannon's an anti-Semite or not. So the entire premise of your discussion, Don, is Steve Bannon's an anti-Semite. I think we've proven that to be false because Evan can't defend it, Kurt can't defend it, Anna can't defend it, and it's not true. And I think that when you do this, this is what the media do, this is what the establishment does, they throw out a bunch of innuendo to try to smear somebody. The most offensive thing Steve Bannon ever did was win the White House with Donald Trump. And if it was up to these people, it would be Hillary Clinton picking the Supreme Court and consigning our democracy to decline. And Steve Bannon deserves the praise of these folks, not their condemnation. You know, I don't know how you can talk about you know, decline on Clinton's behalf when, in the reality, one of the very first things that Donald Trump did uh, was on Sunday tweets out an attack against New York Times that was 100% false, wasn't true, made up numbers about, about circulation that the Times disputed. So where's the Breitbart story saying Donald Trump lied about the New York Times? I mean, if we're going to play, let's be fact checkers, let's tell both sides of the story, where's the Breitbart story highlighting the inaccuracies of the many things that Donald Trump has said that just are point blank not true? I think that's a fair question. I think you should go write something about it. The point of this discussion is whether Steve Bannon's a white nationalist and anti-Semite. I'm glad that we've put that myth to bed. Now let's move on to talking about the country. I don't think we've put that myth to bed. I think that's still a question about it. Just because you say it, it doesn't mean that he's not. Um, and I don't know that he is, but he certainly, he certainly traffics in it when he says... He made a business of it. He, yes. He certainly did not. You guys can't throw out lies like that and ask me to prove a negative when you can't even prove the positive. I could say anything about you, Don Lemon. You know, your network had a commentator the other night who said that the vote for Donald Trump was a white lash. Now, are you a black nationalist network because Van Jones said that there was a white lash? I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's Should, apples and pears. It's, you're, no, it's not. You're it's the same thing. It's exactly the same to, thing. It has nothing to do I with think anything. You, can't, you, you are, cannot prove here's, the case here's you're your, making. You're doing it. Someone who makes a comment on television in a discussion, Van mm -hmm. Jones does not own a website that traffics in white nationalism or admits that it traffics in black nationalism or for the alt-black. So your comparison makes no sense. But we'll discuss. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. For those who voted against Donald Trump but are willing to give him a chance, is the appointment of Steve Bannon a step backwards for the Trump administration? Back with me now, Kirk Bardella, uh, Evan McMullen, and Joel Pollack. Uh, Kurt, I, I want to ask you about this. I want you. Uh, this is Kellyanne Conway, what she says about Steve Bannon. I work very closely with Steve Bannon. He's been the general of this uh, campaign, and frankly, people should look at the full resume. He's got a Harvard business degree. He's a naval officer. He uh, has success in entertainment. I don't know if you're aware of that. And he certainly was a Goldman Sachs managing partner. Brilliant technician. I'm, I'm personally offended that you think I would manage a campaign where that would be one of the going philosophies. It was not. 
I've heard uh, several Trump surrogates on, you know, giving those exact same talking points on air today, almost in the exact order that she said it. But do you think she, that uh, Donald Trump is being tone deaf to millions of Americans who are fearful about a Trump presidency because of someone like Steve Bannon? Yeah, I don't think Donald Trump cares at all about, the, about those people. I think the paradigm that Steve uh, and Mr. Trump, I think, view the world through is they won the election, they did it their way, and the onus is on everybody else to adapt to how they think, not on them to try to evolve or change based on the enormity of being the President of the United States and, and, and the virtual co-chief of staff. I think that they think everybody else needs to come around, they don't need to do anything else. That's usually not how it works. No, that's it's usually not. not what we ask presidents well, to and do. And I think that's one of the real or concerns. Or leaders, any sort of politician, right? I think that's where they're setting themselves up for failure, is, is, is not having that humility uh, and understanding the gravity of the job that's going to be before them. And I think at some point, President-elect Trump is going to be in over his head. We're seeing already stories about how President Obama wants to spend more time with Mr. Trump to prepare him to be Commander-in-Chief because it was so obvious in their meeting and their conversation he wasn't up for it yet. Yeah. Uh, Evan, Donald Trump told his supporters who are harassing minorities to stop it, but you say that doesn't mean much when he brings in someone like Bannon into in the West Wing. Should Trump address these concerns? Well, yes, I think he should, and I think he has tried to, to a degree. But if you're going to continue with Steve Bannon, then, you know, that, that, those actions speak louder than any words you might give. And, and I will say, Don, that I think the discussion about whether Bannon is an anti-Semite, whether he is a white supremacist, all of that's a little even off the point. I think the real question is, what are the ideas that our leaders advance? Mm -hmm. And our leaders now are advancing ideas, at least with the appointment of Steve Bannon, who advanced the ideas of the alt-right as a part of Breitbart, are advancing ideas that are enormously destructive and divisive in our country, that violate the foundational principles upon which our country was founded. It's hard to say, you know, to look into a man's heart and say exactly what they believe or feel. We'll never know. But it's about the ideas that they advance. And one thing is very clear, Steve Bannon has advanced the ideas of the alt-right he knows that his business has been setting up or furthering a platform for their ideas. And Donald Trump has got to repudiate that. And, and it doesn't, it's not possible to do that if Steve Bannon's your chief strategist. And I also realize that by doing that, he may have normalized uh, the alt-right in some way, oh, normalized sure. right, white nationalism, which should not be normalized. So listen, Absolutely. Joel, earlier we, we spoke about the article on Breitbart.com, An Establishment Conservative's Guide to Alt-Right. It's a very long and sympathetic description of the movement, which includes this. I'm going to read this. It says, meanwhile, the alt-right openly cracks jokes about, crack jokes about the Holocaust, loudly, albeit almost entirely satirically, uh, expresses its horror at race mixing and denounces the de degeneracy of homosexuals while inviting Jewish, gays, and mixed-race uh, Breitbart reporters to their secret dinner parties. What gives? If, if you're this far down the article, you'll know some of the answers already. For the meme brig brigade, it's just about having fun. They have no real problem with race mixing, homosexuality, or even uh, diverse societies. It's just fun to watch the mayhem and the outrage that erupts when those secular uh, sh what is that? Sh shibboleths are openly mocked. So I'm just getting, reading this now. So making fun and joking about the Holocaust, calling gays degenerate, I mean, being, being horrified by race, race mixing, and it's all just fun, how is that okay? It's not okay. That's called journalism. That article describes some of what was going on in the alt-right, and you just said that that's the first time that you read that article. I mean, I would have expected that you would have read the entire article before coming on the air and making outrageous claims. Well, I, like I, I Mc, usually... Alvin, but let, uh, what, let me let me let me let me hold on here. I don't read a lot of Breitbart because, quite frankly, I'm offended by a lot of what they put up there. I have read it. I haven't read every single article on Breitbart, and I'm sure you haven't read every single article on Breitbart as well. My question to you is: Is that why he is promoting this? He is saying that his website is the platform for the alt right, and this article on that website is. Part of the thing that's saying, hey, this is what they do. They make fun of people, and they really don't care about it. You should read the entire article. I think the article stands for itself. I think it goes through the different components of the alt-right. It's called journalism. The New Yorker does it. The New York Times does it. CNN occasionally does it. 
And for Evan McMullen to sit there and not apologize for his lie about calling Steve Bannon an anti-Semite and then lie again by saying that Steve Bannon advocates for the ideas of the alt-right, I'd like to see Evan McMullen name one single idea of the alt-right that Steve Bannon has ever advocated for. I'll give you time to do it. You don't have to Joel, do it on this broadcast. Joel, let me ask you, you let me, has, has, has Steve Bannon ever said that his, his, uh, he was, uh, Breitbart was a platform for the alt-right? I think he said that to Mother Jones, but what I can tell you is this. <laughs> there did. is a distinction. I think there's a distinction between covering the alt-right and defending it. And the fact is that people on the alt-right are sharing Breitbart articles. That's, That's not, not what he something said. something we can do anything he said, about. He didn't say we cover the alt-right. He said we are the platform for the alt-right. Well, he said that, and I defy you to explain what that means. You have two guests on there I'm who asking, suggested. What could that's it possibly what, mean? That's what why we have you on. Mean? What so, else could it mean? So, I, so what you guys have said, hold on. The suggestion is that Breitbart is a white nationalist website. We've disproved that. The suggestion no, is you that haven't. Steve Bannon. Yeah. Yes, we have. You no, cannot you name what you have not named. A, you've had a lot of time to do research, and you haven't come up with one white nationalist article at Breitbart. You said that Steve Bannon is an anti-Semite, yet you okay. haven't provided let's, any examples. Let's put this hold on, up. let this me is, finish. No, no, I want you let to look at this. This is, a, this is a headline mm -hmm. from Breitbart after the church shootings in Charleston. Hoist, a, hoist it high and proud. The Confederate flag mm -hmm. pro, pro, proclaims a glorious heritage. And it said it should be, it should be, you know, you should hoist it high and proud from, you know, every church and, uh, and everywhere. So what is that? That's not, that's not what the article said. But the article is a defense of the Confederate flag as an historical symbol. And there are people at other websites and other newspapers who've made the same argument. That was an argument made by Democrats for a long time. And that is an argument that this needs, deserves to be seen as separate from the Charleston massacre. And that's a legitimate yeah. argument. And I think if you, you can go to David French at National Review Online and read the same argument, it yeah. happens to be an argument that lost. Okay. But here's what it says. What you're doing. Here's what it says. It's hoisted right in front. Every tree, every rooftop, every picket fence, every telegraph pole in the South should be festooned with the Confederate battle flag. That's not white nationalist. What you're talking about is an opinion about the Confederate flag as a symbol of history, which used to be commonly accepted in the South. It's not something that I think is a good idea, but it is part of. Yeah, but Kurt Bardella, you know that Steve Bannon is not a white nationalist. You know that he's not an anti-Semite, and yet that's the premise on which you've come on the air to smear him. So now that we've established that you can't prove I'd that he's an anti-Semite. I've never heard Kurt say, say that. You, you, <laughs> not, we, you cannot establish. Look, the Zionist yeah. Organization of America has come out yeah. in defense of Steve Bannon and said that he's pro-Israel and that he has empathy for the Jewish people. And you guys have no answer to that, and you've used up... This Joel, precious hey, airtime, you know, to, to basically smear a man and because smear no a website. Been able to ask Breitbart and now this, that you and can't, you can't prove the here. point. Excuse me, Kurt. You would do better to listen with your ears instead of your mouth. Wow. Okay, it's, okay it's Joel. Good to, Don't put it's your big good. boy pants well, listen, on now. It's, we're it's all going to we have to can't. listen to the commercial break with our ears. Thank you very much. I have to go. Coming up, 13% of black men voted for Donald Trump. So how will race relations change?